In this video, we're going to cover 2D arcade emulation in the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Alright, time for some arcade emulation updates. Not much has really changed in the setup process since my last video, but it's nice to get everything looking roughly the same. So, in this video, we're going to talk about the updated process of getting Final Burn Neo set up to play your arcade games. Now, Final Burn Neo is great for 2D arcade emulation, but if you want to play 3D arcade games, you will need to get something set up like MAME. But let's go ahead and dive in. So the first step to getting your arcade emulation up and running on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch is to install the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Doesn't matter if it's in dev mode or retail mode, just choose which one you want to do, do it before doing this guide. Links in the description below. Next, you will need to source some arcade games, and these can be such a pain in the butt to obtain legally. I actually managed to dump most of mine from a Super Retrocade from Retrobit. Very convoluted process, but hey, at least it's able to be done. Then there's also ways to dump them from arcade 1-up cabinets if you happen to own one. Or of course, as always, you can resort to the shady part of the net to get them. I really don't care which way you go about doing it, but don't ask me for illegal download links as I will never provide them. Now, once you have arcade games sourced, you do need to make sure that they are rebuilt for the current version of Vinyl Burn Neo that you are trying to use. I'm going to let January Me handle the description of how to rebuild these here in a second, but do note that this process is still the same even with today's version of Final Burn Neo, you just need to make sure that you have the updated files, which are updated automatically. So relevant links to all the updated files will be in the description, just follow along with the process. Just don't worry about the version number that's being shown on screen because that's an old version number, and I don't want to re-record this. The info's the same. So, take it over, January me. Once you have your arcade game sourced, they do need to be in a MAME format, so a zip folder with a lot of little sub-files within it. Now, because arcade emulation sucks, even if you have a game, it might not work on your current version of an emulator, depending on how old that game file is. So the best way to make sure that your games are going to work on Final Burn Neo is to download CLR MAME Pro. So head over to this website, it'll be linked in the description. Scroll down to the download section and download the executable for your computer. So I prefer the zip folder myself, and I'm running a 64-bit OS, so that's the one I'm going to download. The next thing we're going to need is a Final Bird Neo Arcade data file right here, so I'll have a link to this in the description as well. But we're going to go to it, and there's going to be a nice little download button right here, but if you click on it, it might just pop up a long friggin' file instead of downloading it like it needs to. So if that happens to you, you can just go back and then right click, save link as, and then make sure it's Final Burn Neo, I already had one downloaded, but make sure it's just saved as a dat file, and then save it. The last file we're going to need is the highscore.dat file, so you can find this in the libretro docs section, I'll have a link in the description below. But basically, same thing as with the Final Burn Neo dat, just right click on it, save link as, and make sure that it's a dat file. Once we have both of these downloaded, we need to extract CLR MAME Pro. So just do this any way that you can. If you have WinZip, WinRAR, whatever, I use 7-Zip. But get it extracted, open up the folder, and then launch cmpro64.exe, or whatever version that you downloaded you should be on 64-bit. And it'll load up this little profiler thing right here. And that's when we're going to grab our Final Burn Neo dat file, drag it in. Where do you want to put this dat? Profiles, select OK. And it will appear right here. So select it, click on Load. When it asks you for settings, click on Default. Uh, just hit OK to all of this. And again. There we go, now we have CLR Main Pro's main menu up here. Now before we do anything, we need to set a ROM folder. So I'm going to add where I have my arcade games. I just have them in a folder called Arcade Games. And then from the drop down menu here, go to Sample Path and then just add another folder. I don't really know. I'm just going to add a samples folder within the arcade folder. 
and select that. Again, I'm not that into arcade emulation, so I'm not sure of the proper usage of a samples folder, but it says it needs one, so I gave it one. Once you have those set, you can close out of this and go into the scanner. We want non-merged sets, and then click on Advanced, and tell it to not separate BIOS sets. So we want it to check everything, and then we can also tell it to fix everything, like date, size, name, unneeded files, case. Don't click missing, otherwise it'll add in a lot of extra nonsense that you don't need. And then click New Scan. Once that's finished, you'll get a new little statistics thing here telling you how many games you're missing, how many you have. Which is fine, we just hit OK to get out of that, and we're going to go to the have list. We're going to save it. It will generate the list for us, and then we can open it up. And if the games you have appear on the have list, that means they're good to go right onto your Xbox. If they don't show up here, it means they likely will not work. Either they're missing a single file or multiple files, I don't know. But if they don't show up on your have list, you got to do extra work for them. You can also look at the set information over here. If you click on this, it'll bring up a nice little list of everything that you've got. So you can find one of the games that you have. 1942. So here it shows that I have all of those files. But if I go down to 1941, I don't have them. But I do have the required BIOS files from a different ROM. But this lets you know what you're missing and what you need to find to fix it. So if you have a game that is just missing like one file, you just need to track it down. Now just a note here for arcade games, they do need to be non-merged so they can be either split, which I'm not covering, or non-merged sets where it includes the BIOS files inside the ROMs. If you have a merged set, which includes like all the clones and various sub-releases of a game, RetroArch will not be able to see them, so you will need to rebuild them. You will need to rebuild them as a non-merged set. You can go to Advanced to not separate BIOS files. That way every game will run independently. And then you just set a destination for it and click Rebuild. Do note this process will take a while. After the rebuild is done, you're going to end up with a ton of zip files for games you might not even have, but they share BIOS files with another game. So what you're going to do here is just look for the games that you originally put in. So for example, I had 1942, 1943, Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2, and Street Fighter Alpha 3, Star Wars, and TMNT2. So I'm just going to cut these out, put them in a new folder, and then I'm just going to delete this fixed arcade games folder I made earlier. But from here we, we can go back into CLR Main Pro, go back to the scanner, close out of that, change our settings, we could choose the new ROM path, we're going to change this just a new folder too. Close this, go back into the scanner. Non-merge sets, look at everything fixed again. New scan. And it should pop up the same way as before, all of your data here. But go to have list, save your have list text. I'm just going to overwrite my previous one. And then I'm going to tell it to open it. And there we go, it found all of the games that I had before, because I already had them in the right format, but I rebuilt them, they are still good. So now I can just copy them over to my USB drive. So for those of you out there with merge sets, you will need to do this rebuild. If you have non-merge sets, you should be fine. Alright, thank you so much, January Me! Alright, once you have your arcade games all rebuilt to work with the current version of Final Bird Neo, you just need to decide if you want to put them onto a USB drive or your Xbox's internal SSD. For my purposes, I'm just going to add them to my USB drive. And optionally, if you want to, you can also copy that Final Burn Neo DAT file you used to rebuild the games into your USB drive as well, so that way when you make a playlist, it will give your games the correct names. So I just went ahead and copied that onto my flash drive as well. 
and we'll touch on this again in a second. Now one more optional step if you want to have high scores for your arcade games is to add the Final Bird Neo highscore.dat file to your RetroArch system folder. I included that folder within my uh, Xbox RetroArch file, so you might have already placed it during initial setup. I show both those steps in the setup guide, all these folders, but if you didn't then you can do it now, just click on download to get the folder. Once it's downloaded, get it extracted, and inside you'll see the FB Neo folder with the highscore.dat file inside of it. Now if you moved your system folder to USB, just access your USB drive on your computing device of choice, open up the system folder, drag the Final Burn Neo folder right inside. I already had it, so I'm just telling it to overwrite. Or if you have your system folder on the Q drive still, just open up Durango FTP and start your file share. Now over on your computing device, access your Xbox's FTP file share using your preferred method. Go into your local folder, your RetroArch folder, your local state folder, your system folder and then drag that Final Burn Neo folder right on in. Again, I already have it, so I'm just telling you to overwrite. With all of these steps out of the way, we're ready to close out of everything on the PC side, take our USB drive out, put it back in the Xbox, and load into RetroArch. All right, and with everything in place, let's get booted into RetroArch. And once RetroArch is finished loading up, we're free to begin loading into our content. I'm going to skip over the load content section this time and go straight to making a game's playlist. So head over to import content and do a manual scan. Now from here, choose your content directory. If your games are on the internal SSD, you go to S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch folder, Games folder, choose your arcade games folder, tell it to scan this directory. If you're like me and have your games stored on USB, they will be located under E, your arcade games folder, and then just tell it to scan this directory. Now for system name, you can scroll down, and we can find FB Neo Arcade Games. Now for default core, this is a Final Burn Neo tutorial, so we're choosing Final Burn Neo. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And now for the arcade dat file, if you put this on USB like I did, you can find it there, or it could be under the internal SSD, wherever you decided to put it, just locate it, so that way your file names won't look ugly. And once these options are set, start the scan. And with the scan completed, we'll have a new arcade games playlist entry here on the left, and now we have all of our games named appropriately. And then to play a game, all we need to do is select it and tell it to run. And we're ready to begin playing our 2D arcade games with Final Bird Neo. You can press the back button on your controller to activate your coin slots, and then press start to begin playing. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the more advanced core options available within Final Bird Neo. So if we go into our RetroArch Quick Menu, head down to Options. And our first option is to use 32-bit color depth when available. Turn this option on for better colors. Next, vertical mode. If you have a display that can rotate and you want to take advantage of it in vertical shooters like 1942 here, you could turn this option on to rotate the screen 90 degrees to the right or alternate to make it to the left, depending on how your screen can rotate. But as you can see, it gives you a lot more real estate to work with in these vertical shooters. Next up, high scores option. You can leave this on. Again, just put that Final Burn Neo and then highscores.dat file in the system folder for this to really work. Allow patched ROM sets. You can leave this on, I'm not covering patched ROM sets though. Analog speed, you can increase the sensitivity or decrease it here. We can't do light gun stuff on the Xbox version of RetroArch currently, so we're going to skip over that one. And that brings us to CPU clocks. So for older arcade games that had hardware-induced lag, you can overclock the emulated CPU of that system to make it go faster. We're going to skip frame skip settings because bleh. And move on to audio settings. First up, sample rate. This is set to 48,000 by default. If you want to have slightly lower audio quality, you can knock it down. Next, we could change our sample and FM interpolation. And then also enable a low pass filter. Next up are dip switches, and these will be arcade game specific. You could set a number of settings within your arcade games directly from the RetroArch Quick Menu, which is one of the reasons why I love Final Burn Neo so much, because it's just really easy. Well, you could choose coins, cabinet types, bonus lives, starting lives, and then player two coins, service mode, flip the screen around, difficulty levels, but these are going to change depending on what game you are actually playing. And again, dip switches will change from game to game, so 
check that section out. It's really cool to see what you could do with some of these arcade cabinets. But that's going to do it for core options. If there's an option you want to have set for some games but not others, not regarding dip switches, you can save them as a game options file within the manage core options settings here. But now, just as a quick note here, there are some games that don't have their options within the RetroArch Quick Menu. One of those being Marvel vs. Capcom. As you can see, there's no dip switch settings within the core options here. And in cases like this, you will need to use the Diagnostic Input button. I have mine set to hold Select. Yours might be set to hold Start by default. I had to change this for Neo Geo games. But going back into the game, you can hold down your Diagnostic button, and it will bring you into a test menu and that's where you can begin to configure stuff in the game. So things like difficulty, coin modes, and other things like that. So just be aware of that for games that don't support the dip switches within the quick menu. But that's going to do it for Final Burn Neo Arcade Emulation on the Xbox Series X and S. Again, a little bit more complicated to get set up thanks to arcade games being what they are. But once you get it going, it can be very enjoyable. And again, Final Burn Neo is specifically meant for 2D arcade games, so for any of those 3D arcade games, you are going to need to pull out MAME or something like that. As always, if you happen to have any questions about getting things set up, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to try to help you out. I'm not a big fan of arcade emulation, but I'll do what I can. But now, if you could all do me a huge favor, and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video, and if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Things are constantly updating, and we try to keep things here as up-to-date as possible. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you could also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping us going, and we're so grateful to all of our current champions who believe in what we do and just show that support. Thank you all so much for being our friggin' rock stars. You're all amazing. But that's gonna do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, and we will see you back next video.